How you guys doing? My name's Will with Farrington Nature Link. That's Chris on the camera, another uh, employee of Farrington. And out here today, we're going to be learning about something real special. We're going to be learning about vernal pools. Before we get started, I just want to give you guys a little introduction. So Chris and I are staying at least six feet away from each other for social isolation and safe distance keeping. And out here at Farrington, the trails are closed to the public. Uh, so even though it's a great place close to Boston, I want you guys staying safe. Um, so we're going to keep this place uh, a little bit more private for now. A little bit about what Farrington is. We're a nonprofit based in Lincoln, Massachusetts, and we work to get urban, underserved youth outdoors with an emphasis on health and wellness, building uh, connections to nature. You might ask yourself, why is nature connected to health and wellness? Well, getting outside it helps reduce your risk of anxiety, helps reduce your risk of depression, and it just rejuvenates your soul. So during these particularly stressful and kind of crazy uncertain times, Getting outside can be a great thing to do for yourself. And that might mean walking down the street. It might mean going to the public park. But if you're lucky enough to have woods like these, go for a walk, go for a hike, and see what's out there. Some places that I really recommend checking out close to Boston, Blue Hills Reservation, Middlesex Fells Reservation. If you have access to a car, check out Esterbrook Woods in Concord and Carlisle. Chris, what's the name of the park in Lincoln you were talking about? Pierce Park. Pierce Park in Lincoln. All those places have great examples of wetlands, and that's what we're learning about today. They got ponds, they got swamps, they got bogs, and they got vernal pools. So you might be asking yourself, what is a wetland? And let's talk about it a little bit. Here we go. Let's see. A wetland is any place where you got water interacting with the soil. So a pond, a really common type of wetland, you have your dip in the land there, and it's full of water, it's full of water. That line of water right here, that's called the water table. It's called the water table. So in the pond, the height of the water is right at that water table. A swamp is kind of like a pond. It's a lot shallower, maybe just a couple feet deep at most places, and it's dominated by trees. It has a bunch of trees. That's a swamp. And the trees can go there because it's shallow enough where it's nice and safe. Chris, you can see this okay? Yeah. A bog is kind of similar to a swamp. It might have a shallow layer of water. It's dominated by grasses and mosses. And a bog is really unique in that it has layers of peat. And some bogs can extend really deep. And that peat is all the dead moss that's just crushing, squishing down on itself. And those are really, really unique habitats for a lot of different types of animals. But it's not quite what we're going to be learning about today. We're going to be learning about vernal pools. Now, what is a vernal pool? Uh, they're common to Massachusetts, and they're an incredibly unique, rich ecosystem. If you don't know what an ecosystem is, an ecosystem is any place uh, where animals and critters are interacting with one another. Uh, in a vernal pool, that ecosystem can be salamanders, can be frogs, insects. Some of them might be eating each other, but they're all spending time together and growing together. So we're out here by a vernal pool right now. It's a really special one we're going to get talking about in just a minute. But a vernal pool is a seasonal wetland. So it might be just like a little dip in the earth, but during the end of winter, early spring when the snow is melting and it's raining a lot, those nice little raindrops, it's raining a lot, that's going to start filling up with water. Late winter, early spring, it's going to start filling up with water. And because it's seasonal, it might only last a couple of months. By July or August, it's going to get so hot that that water is going to evaporate, it's going to disappear, and you're going to be left with that little dip in the earth again. Some vernal pools only come every couple of years, and some of them come all the time. Another interesting small thing about vernal pools before we get started, looking for little critters, some vernal pools are only a couple feet deep, two or three feet deep. In other vernal pools, it's a little bit more rare to have one like this, other vernal pools can be 10 or more feet deep. So I'm six foot tall, this net that's maybe like four and a half feet tall, maybe five feet long. Let's see how long this is gonna go. 
Let's actually see if you guys can guess. Can you guys comment how deep you think this is going to be? And maybe Chris can read them out to me. Oh, I don't know if that's going to work see. or not. Just waiting on some posts. Okay, we're just going to we're going to wait for a second. Again, common one is 2 to 3 feet deep. Other ones can be 10 feet or more deep. What do you guys think? Do you have any ideas? No comments thus far. Okay, well, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. How nice and slow here. Let's see. It's maybe like a foot, like two feet, and three feet. And I'm just hitting bottom right now. Just hitting bottom right now. This is a really deep fernal pool. Ah, it's down there. We're going to find. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Got a whole bunch of good things. Let's see. I'll we'll squeeze it out a little bit. And we'll turn it upside down, see what we can find in here. So down there at the very bottom of this vernal pool, what do you guys see? What did we find? Looks like there's a lot of dead leaves. Oh, piece of a log that's starting to decay. And these leaves, these dead leaves down here, that's the main food source in vernal pools. It's the main food source. And what happens is the trees up above us shed their leaves in the fall. They settle down there in the pool. And along come little insects, little critters. Those are kind of the smallest animals that live in those pools. They're going to come down. They're going to chew on that. Arm, 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 arm. Have a little breakfast. And uh, they're going to tear it up into smaller pieces. And then other animals can come along and eat them. Or they can eat the insects that tore them up. Let's see if we can find any insects in here. See if we got any. Right now we'd be looking for beetles, be looking for caddisflies. If we we're really lucky, we'd see a fairy shrimp, which live in vernal pools. Let's see what we got going on in here. And you know, at this time of year, there might not be anything. But in a couple months, we're gonna really start seeing the life come to these vernal pools. We're gonna start seeing frogs. If you come out here at night, at this time of year, that's when you're going to see spotted salamanders. You're going to see some obligate vernal pool species. Let's put some of this back. Feed the future of this vernal pool. While we're here, I want you guys to take a look around the outside of this vernal pool. What do you see here? You might see some moss. And that moss might be on top of stones. It might be on top of stones. So I want to take a little trip back in time. Maybe 400 years ago. This whole area around us used to be a farm. It used to be a farm. There were wolves roaming around. There were all sorts of different creatures. Uh, you also had your farm animals and your farmers. So if you were a cow and you were living out here and it was a really hot day, where would you like to go and drink? A little drink of water. You might come down here. You guys have any ideas about what this space might be? Throw it in the comments. See if you can comment it. We'll see if you guys can find out. Think about it as a ring of stones around it, and it's a deep pool of water. What do you think? I don't know how the comments work. You guys might be saying stuff, and we're not getting it. But I'll let you know. This is a well. This is a well. Uh, and in this well, you know, in the next couple weeks as things warm up, again, if you come out here on a warm spring rainy night and you bring a headlamp or a flashlight, you're going to see all sorts of life. But you're going to start seeing things called obligate vernal pool species. Obligate vernal pool species. And those are types of animals that only live in vernal pools and they need them to survive. And that's why vernal pools are so special. There's critters that live in here that only thrive off of vernal pools. And we're talking about wood frogs. We're talking about Jefferson salamanders, spotted salamanders, marble salamanders. Fairy shrimp. Do you know there are freshwater little shrimp in Massachusetts? Fairy shrimp. There's all sorts of critters that rely on these vernal pools that fill up at this time of year and none, no other times. No other times. It's a really unique habitat for those creatures. Let's take another dive with the, with the uh, net here and see what we can find. You know, at this time we might find salamander eggs. They've been breeding. So you might find salamander eggs. You might find little tadpoles, little young frogs. But let's see if we can take a dip with it. Let's see. Another scoop. Get another scoop. Get some of these leaves at the top. 
If you guys have any questions as we go along, feel free to put them in the comments and we'll see if we can read them out to you guys. I'm not sure if that's how that works. Let's cut this one out right over here. See what we can find. Oh man, that is gross. Yeah, it smells really bad. It smells really bad. But why do you guys think it might smell bad? What's happening to all the plants in there over time? They're dying. They're dying and mixing with that mud and that muck. They start getting really gross smells as things start to break down. And you know, if we don't have any luck here, let's move on to our other little wetland area and go and check out. Oh, what's this? Ah, uh, here we go. Here's something. This one's really hard to see. It's a little warm in there. Do you see that, guys? He's right there. He's right there. Just wiggling around. Just a little guy. Neat. Oh man, my hands are cold, but if they were warmer, what do you think you'd feel? Do you think it'd be soft? Do you think it would be slimy? Do you think that we could hurt it by accident if we're not gentle with it? There's a lot of things to consider when we're interacting with nature like this. We have a question, Will. Uh-huh, what's up? Someone asked, what does it smell like? Oh god, what does it smell like? Um... Hmm, let me think. It smells... It smells like, have you ever walked by a dumpster that's full of old food that starts to break down? Like, I imagine a hot summer day. You ever walk by a dumpster and you're starting to smell waste? Or maybe if you're in the city and you walk over, like, a vent that goes down to sewers. It's kind of a... It's not quite as bad as that. This is definitely a little bit more earthy. But it's a similar... Similar scent where just things are breaking down, they're decaying. And if you're one of my students and we learned about compost together, that's that decay that's happening. These leaves are starting to break down, they're turning brown, they come apart really easily, just like that. And they're turning into this muck that we're getting down there. This is such important fuel uh, for this vernal pool. It's a really neat place. So Chris, what do you think we head on over to another wetland nearby and see what we can find there? All right, let's grab our stuff. Let's see what we got. Got my net. These guys. And we're just gonna go on a little journey. We're just gonna go on a little walk on over there. Here we go. So I like to just play a little game of imagination when I'm back here. Walking in these woods, you'll find these little uh, Spindella rosa, these little princess pines, and they're actually just about fully grown at that size. They don't really get much bigger. But Chris, what do you feel when you touch them? What do they feel like to you? Pretty soft. Pretty soft. And it's a fun way to think about it. I like to imagine that I'm a giant, and these are fully grown pine trees, and I'm just kind of tromping around through the woods. It's a great little game I like to play with myself. And it's really, they're just these soft, really beautiful, delicate little creatures that just grow out here like nobody's business. We're surrounded by them right now. Well, we had one more question about the vernal pool back here before yeah, we go. What's up? What's Someone up? asked, is the water cold? Oh yeah, you betcha. Yeah, my hands are freezing right now. And you know, yesterday I was checking out some vernal pools in my sneakers, I was not prepared. And I stepped in one uh, and my foot just got completely soaked. And I was like about as far away from home as I could be. And then today when Chris and I were getting ready for this video, I stepped in a pond in my boot and my boot filled with water. So my, my foot's actually pretty cold too. Um, so we're probably going to do this one to 30 minutes. Um, yeah, my hands are really chilly. A little quick tip. I'll show you a little quick tip about how I like to warm my hands up when I'm outside. I like to straighten my elbows out as much as I can. Spread my fingertips. And if you pump your shoulders up and down, and feel the blood go to your fingertips and warm them up. I'm not too cold. I'm like able to still touch things and move things, and I'm not shivering or anything. Thanks, Will. That's a good question. Yeah, the water is really cold. You know, at this time of year, what it, it froze two nights ago, right? There, we got the low freezing out here. Yep. So that water temperature is probably just above freezing, probably in the high 30s uh, at the warmest. So yeah, it's really chilly. 
it's really chilly. The closest thing to it is probably if you just take a glass of ice water and stick your fingers in there. And you'll feel something pretty similar. Now when Chris and I were walking out here, we're getting a little off topic, but we saw something really cool. And maybe Chris can get close. And I'll, I'll stand back a little bit so, with this guy so he can get closer to it. And I'll just poke it here. Does anybody know what these guys are? Throw something up in the comments. Does anybody know what these guys are? What do you think? Let's see. I'll let you guys know. These are a type of fungi. Another word for fungi is mushrooms. And these ones are called brown puffball mushrooms. And they're actually pretty dangerous, you know. It, with some mushrooms in the woods, like chicken of the woods, um, chanterelle, um, you know, a whole bunch of other guys, you can eat those. And if you're a professional or with a professional who knows how to identify them, go ahead. But if you're not a professional, and even if you're not 100% certain, you definitely don't want to eat any wild mushroom. But these ones are particularly dangerous. Chris, why don't we get real close so you can see what happens when we tap this guy. When you push on these, a little puff. Do you guys see that? I don't know if the video quality is good enough. There's a little puff of brown dust coming out. And that stuff is really bad for your lungs. Sorry, Chris, that you got so close to it. <laughs> you, you don't want it. You don't want to put that in, in your mouth. It'll make you uncomfortable. Well, let's keep walking. Let's keep walking. And these fungi, they're breaking down all these logs here, these dead logs. I'm seeing other plants are going to grow out of them besides the moss and the fungi. You're going to get little trees growing out of the old trees. And in this ecosystem, that's replenishing the life cycle of those plants, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah. It's beautiful out here. You might see there are old stone walls around us back from when these were farms too. In the 1600s, when all this place was being turned into farms, the trees were all cut down. And when they were tilling the soil, digging it up, every rock they find, the big ones, they put into stone walls. And those rocks, they're, um, oh, let's go this way. Those rocks are everywhere in the soil, everywhere in the soil. Because way longer ago, during the Ice Age, as glaciers were moving over the course of Massachusetts, they were dropping rocks along the way. And those are the ones that are left over way, way back when, when we were under feet of ice. All right, here we are in another common wetland. Let's see if we can get on down close. Chris, you're looking at this moss earlier. Do you want to take another gander at that? Sure. Beautiful. And it's so soft. It's so soft. And if you're out here and you want to take a nap, this is the place to do it. <laughs> it's just like a soft little bed. And it's so gentle and green. It just actually feels really nice on my cool pants. So if we go back to our types of wetlands, we learned about vernal pools, which are seasonal wetlands. Uh, but we listed off a couple other different types of ones. We talked about ponds, which are a depression in the earth that has water in it. Depression is just like a little dip. There's a little dip in the earth that has water in it. We talked about swamps, which are like ponds, but they're dominated by trees. We talked about bogs, which are shallow pieces of water with moss and then a bunch of mud, some, a bunch of peat. It's not really mud, it's a little different, but peat down below it. So knowing that, what kind of wetland do you think we're at right now? What do you guys think? Check it out. What do you see? Well, while we're getting some comments on that, um, some responses, someone had a question about the moss. They said, why is there moss? Oh, why is there moss? That's a really good question. Um, moss thrives off of moist environments. So when we're down here by the water, this is a really good place for moss to grow. It's a really good place for moss to grow. Uh, but if you're asking why there's moss in general, uh, they get to act as uh, sometimes fungi uh, and sometimes something called mycelium. And moss can actually help trees communicate with one another. Help trees communicate with one another. But they just grow out here because it's nice and wet. 
Yeah. Okay. That's a great question. We have some responses from your previous question. Yeah, what do you guys think? Two people have said swamp, one okay. pond. Okay. Two swamps and one pond. I'd almost say that you're both right. You know, if you look out farther, you can see where the water starts to uh, fade away. We start getting kind of like mossy areas with some trees. That is a swamp out farther away. But right here with this body of water, with this body of water, we're talking about a pond out here. If you look in the middle, are there any trees growing in the middle of that water? Any trees growing in the middle of the water? No, it's completely clear. But both of those are great responses. Those are great responses. Now, when Chris and I were here earlier, we found some really interesting critters. We found caddisflies. Um, for a second, we thought it was a fairy shrimp. Okay. Um, but let's see what we can find out here. It's a little bit more shallow, but I still want to be careful because this is where I filled my boot with water. And I'm going to be thinking about that for a while. Pondering my mistakes. You know? Pondering my mistakes. So let's see. See what we can find. Stump this bad boy out. I think another neat little thing here is there's a bunch of animal holes, some critters that live in here. Let's see what we can find in there. There's a tadpole. Oh, a tadpole? Yep. Where? Right here. Oh, I feel bad for him. Come here, buddy. So we're gonna put this guy right back. This guy right back. But this is a tadpole. And this is the early life cycle of a frog before it develops legs. Yeah, I forgot the name for frog in Latin, but it means no legs. But when we're out here, uh, we want to be really kind to nature. So I'm going to put this guy right back. Just check it out one more time. I think it's so cool. It swims around, uses that tail to propel itself through the water. Beautiful. Let's put that back so he can grow up into a frog. Nice eyes, Chris. Jeez. Make sure he just swims away. Yeah, he's okay. Oh, crikey. That's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else we got going on in here. Chris, begin to great. Oh, what's that? Ah, oh, that's just a leaf. <laughs> Get all excited when you're doing stuff like this because there's so much cool things. So many cool things. So much cool stuff, one could say. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, look at that. See him crawling around there? Nice. That's a creepy little monster. That thing is beautiful. Look at him. Most how? Um, let him go underneath this leaf and hide for a bit. There he is. There's another tadpole. Where is he? Right there. Wow, Chris, you have an amazing eye for tadpoles. It's one of them. Oh, he's wiggling. Do you see him wiggling? Let's put him back in water because these guys need it to survive. Even put them, I'm just going to pick up the dirt underneath them. There we go. Nice and gentle. Put them in my hands. And let's put them back in the water. Goodbye. Wow. That was awesome. So, my... Oh, I just fell there for a sec. The place I recommend to do this... Oh, there's another tadpole. Holy camoly. They are everywhere. Place I recommend to do this is Danahee Park in Cambridge. I saw some snakes with some students there last year, and there's a lot of great aquatic life. And you'll see some cool birds. Yeah, are there are some common morgansers there, which is a great type of duck. Yeah, it's New England. And uh, just a really neat time. Chris, I'm worried that there are more tadpoles in here that are slowly dying on land. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to pick up this whole pile in just a sec and move it. Oh, what's that? What's that? Oh, nothing. And I think I'm going to bring it all back. This is what I was looking at. Oh, wow! Awesome! Awesome! Does anybody know what that is? Can you guys tell us? What do you think? We'll give that a couple minutes. I'm going to start moving this back while you guys think about it. Here, Chris, do you want to focus on it again so they can see it one more time? Right down there. What do you guys think that is? What do you guys think that is? Any ideas? Well, we have a question from 
Someone asking about how long does it take to grow from tadpole to frog? Oh man, you know I'm not actually sure, but if we think about when we come out here with kids in the summertime, you know in May and June, we're seeing fully grown frogs then. So I can't imagine that it spends more than a couple weeks at each stage in its life cycle. Once it, it becomes, starts as an egg, turns into a tadpole, then it turns into kind of this in-between phase when it starts to have legs but still has a tail, and then it morphs into a fully grown frog when it gets rid of the tail. Chris, do you know what that in-between stage is called? I can never remember. I can't remember either, yeah. We'll just call it an in-between stage. But if you Google life cycle of a frog, you guys are on the internet right now, so take advantage of it. If you Google life cycle of a frog, you'll quickly find out all sorts of things about how long they're in each position for, about what the different stages are called, um, and about when they lay their eggs. About two weeks ago, I was out in the woods, right? And I heard a... And I thought to myself, that's a frog party. It's a frog party. So I took a couple steps in the woods, took one step closer, and I stepped on a branch and went crack. And I heard... So I get quieter. They thought, oh, there might be a predator nearby big animal. I, of course, don't eat frogs, um, but they didn't know that, and they were scared. A few less frogs, and maybe I was 10 feet away, about as far away from you as I am now, and took one more step. I stepped on a couple dead leaves and went, rustle, 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 and, uh, and then all the frogs suddenly stopped, suddenly stopped, and I thought, they, they really know I'm here, and they're scared, but I'm so curious. I got to see. I took one more step, and about like a thousand frogs went pop, 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 pop. They all jumped into the water at once, and there's a big vernal pool. You know, some vernal pools can be small, like the one we were at that's like five feet across or so, and then some vernal pools can be acres long, as big as playing fields. And that one I was at was probably like 40 feet across. There's a big vernal pool, and all those frogs were in there mating, about to lay eggs, getting ready for the season. And uh, I scared the heck out of them. So you never know what you're going to find out here in the woods. Uh, we're about time, but maybe I'll do one more scoop in those leaves there. We can see what we can find. While I'm scooping around and dumping stuff out, do you guys have any other questions about vernal pools, about wetlands in New England, or really anything else we're working on today? Post them in the comments. I'll be right back. <laughs> well, I'm just going to put the... The snail back. Oh, did people guess it as a snail? Most people said snail. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. And there's no snail in there right now. It's just an empty shell. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's nice if you find beautiful things in the woods to take them home with you as a little souvenir. But there's something called leave no trace policies. And that is us helping to take care of the environment. And something leave no trace says is to leave natural artifacts where you find them. Not just for them to replenish and be a part of the environment and the ecosystem, but also for other people who come outside and want to enjoy the space to enjoy them too. So I'm going to put this guy right back in the water. You know, maybe if you're a student and you get to come here on a field trip, you can take your net and you'll find the same snail shell. Look at that. Let's see if we can find one more stupid thing. And we'll probably call it a day. Unless, Chris, do you want to go down to the, do you want to go to the boardwalk? What do you guys think? Do you guys want to go down to the boardwalk after this and check out a swamp? What do you guys think? Post in the comments while we look through these leaves. I think there's a boardwalk pretty close to here. It'll just take us a couple seconds and there's a cool swamp. You guys want to check that out. Chris, are you down for that? Okay. Sure. Yeah, you don't have any time constraints? Okay. Maybe we can do that real quick. Kind of like a choose your own adventure. Well, you guys think about if you want to go check out that swamp. Let's see if there's any more critters in here. Now, I got a question for you guys. Do we see any mud in here like the last one? Is there any mud? Or is it mostly just leaves? That's right, it's mostly just leaves. So do you think I took this from a more shallow part closer to the top or a deeper part? Where do you think the more mud would be? sorts of good critters. Yeah, this is from a more shallow part up near the top. There's another insect right here, the end of this fig finger. 
And I'm not an insect specialist, but I think that's a caddis fly. And what's going to happen is he lives underwater right now, but soon he's going to actually grow wings. He's going to fly around. And that's a great time to go fishing when the caddis fly are flying around, because then the fish are jumping. And if you tie a fly that looks like a caddis fly, if you have a hook that looks like a caddis fly, you can catch a lot of good fish like that. I found something else I think is really special, Chris, and I accidentally smushed it. It's another shell, but this one, it's so soft. It's so soft. I hope you guys can see this. That it actually, it actually folded up and smushed, and I killed by accident. That's a hard thing about being a person, is we're so big, sometimes we kill things without meaning to. That makes me really sad. Um, I actually smushed it, but the shell is so soft, it bends and flexes like that. But now that snail is dead. And uh, that's it's really okay. sad. I feel I actually feel bad. But um, <laughs> let's move on before I start um, shedding a tear. And it's another one. Wow. Okay, back they go. You know, one safety consideration I want to mention while we're out here is uh, our ticks. In three days, I've gotten two deer ticks that have bitten onto me. So when you come outside, the way to prevent getting tick bites is wearing long pants, long sleeves. But I was doing that and I still got them on me. So when you go back inside from going outdoors, have a family member or a friend check your back where you can't see. But then look under your armpits, look behind your knees, um, and try and find ticks that will look like little black dots. Um, and some of them are dangerous because uh, they carry disease. It will kill you. Um, but so long as you get them out within a day and a half of them actually biting you, your chance of getting the disease is super low. Super low. And they're easy to pull out. You can just take tweezers, pop them right out. Or you, most of the time you can even use your fingers when they're not in there. So um, just a little safety thing. What do you guys think? Should we go to the swamp? Most people have said yes. Let's Ever do it. Come on, guys. Let's go check it out. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. This place is great. It'll only take a couple minutes to walk there. It's a beautiful day. And you know, it stopped raining. So why not go and enjoy the space outside while we can? I, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, though. It was raining really hard yesterday, and I had maybe just the best walk in the woods I've had all year. It was really beautiful. There's something about being in New England when the rain is falling and it's late winter time. Things aren't too lively yet, so it's really quiet. Everybody's kind of hunkering down. And you also feel a little bit more intrepid. Like a little bit more of an explorer. Uh, oh, is that poison ivy, Chris? We should talk about this while we're here. Right here, is that it? That's some poison ivy? Looks kind of like it to me. It does look kind of like it. That looks kind of like poison ivy to me, so we don't want to touch it, but while we're here, it's a great time to talk about what it looks like. Ooh, this stick is perfect. Let's use this guy. So, if you see, there are leaves of three. They're in pairs of three. One, two, three. They kind of have this distinct edge around them. It's not super sharp, but it's a kind of soft bump and tight spacing. And they can be green, like this one. This stick is hard to use. I'm using two, hand, two different sticks with two different hands. They can be green, like these leaves back here. They can start turning reddish. I think these ones are actually dead, but this is alive. And the oils on poison ivy, if you get that on your skin, uh, that's what... Are we good? As long as we wash our hands, with soap and water and like wash wherever you might have touched it with soap and water, you should be okay. There's stuff called Tefnu you can get at Steve Jeff that rubs the oils off. Fun fact about poison ivy, Lewis and Clark, I don't know if you guys heard about that, there are these two guys who were hired by the government way back when, like a couple hundred years ago, to go and explore the west coast of the United States. So the oils of poison ivy on their clothes that are in a museum right now are still active. Still active. Isn't that crazy? So you could touch their clothes, and if you're really sensitive to poison ivy, you could get poison ivy from them. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Yeah. So it's an important thing when you're out here to just be aware. Just be aware of that. Maybe we can talk about, maybe we can do one of these things where we talk about survival skills. Or staying safe outdoors. Um, just a cool little tidbit. A new piece of information. And now we're coming down. Notice that we're about to start going downhill. 
that's a start going downhill. So if you're looking for wetlands, do you think you should be looking high up, like on a hill, or do you think you should be looking at the bottom of the hill? What do you guys think? Maybe say why. show up kind of late compared to when I say stuff, so it's hard to know what you guys are thinking. Yeah. Well, we're out here now, and we're, uh, we're another unique wetland. Do you guys remember what this one is called? Imagine it's a couple inches or a foot or two of water, and there's a lot of trees, dominated by trees. Do you guys remember what we were talking about? Where are we? I'll let you guys ruminate on that, and I'll start looking for some critters. I'll start looking for some critters. Ruminate means to think, but if you're a ruminate, that means to have a couple stomachs. <laughs> oh man, look at that. That is gross. Oh, yuck. I have this net all tangled up with just a bunch of mud. Oh, that is gross. Come on out. There we go. Gross, but exciting. But exciting. Well, when you have a chance, do you want to show them these mushrooms over here on the log? Oh, yeah. Straight yeah. ahead. Let's just do that. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's go check them out. Right here. Oh. Oh, yeah. Nice. Take a look at these bad boys. Now, <laughs> you guys hear that? The squelching of my boots. That's why you gotta wear your boots when you got tromping around the in the swamps. When I was in eighth grade, I used to go down to the swamps with my friends all the time and we'd look for snakes and turtles. Find all sorts of cool things. But we'd go on our sneakers. It'd be gross. And our feet would be wet. Yeah, check out these fungi. So the two types of mushrooms that we found so far, how we found them on dead wood. On dead wood. Uh, do you think they like to grow on on living things as much? Mushrooms. If you guys, if any of you were my students during the comp uh, decomposition lessons, learning about compost, you might know the answer to this one. But what do you all think? Do you think they grow on live wood or dead wood mushrooms? I'll let you guys think about that. <laughs> while, you're thinking, <laughs> while you're thinking about it, I think I think when you guys comment, we don't see it for a while, or maybe we're lagging by like. A couple minutes or something but if you guys feel this this mushroom you know i'm not good enough on mushrooms chris do you know what these are these are shelf mushrooms shelf mushrooms i believe i'm not sure exactly what type they're beautiful and are they edible i'm not sure and because we don't know if they're edible or not we're not going to eat them but these ones to me they i wish you guys could feel them because they're they're such a great Oh, wow, look at that. That's beautiful. There's such a great texture. Oh, man, I'm sinking in this mud. But here, check out the back of them, Chris. Why don't you film the back of them? They're kind of this spongy, almost leathery. They're not really soft, but they're not hard either. They're a little in between, and they just feel super, super good. Really nice things to touch on your hands. Great, great feeling, great sensation. That's something, that's a great thing to do outside. You know, if you see something that's interesting, just touch it and spend a couple minutes really just sitting with it. Think about what it feels like in your hands. Does it make you feel any certain way? Does it make you feel good, scared, curious? Um, any sort of feeling is a good one to have outdoors. Um, and so long as you're prepared, you're always going to be okay. You know, I don't know if we're going to find too much life in here right now. Um, but one last interesting tidbit before we say goodbye. is later in the summer, for the folks who know Farrington well, and you might have walked this boardwalk, you'll find that in June or July, it's almost completely dry. There's no water in it. But right now, it's just teeming with life. So even if you think this time of year, it's not quite springtime, and it's not in full full bloom, and it's not really winter anymore. 
there's all sorts of life and exciting things happening outdoors right now. Um, so if you can, and you can do it safely, maybe social isolating and with distance, get outside. Because um, it really just, it makes you feel good and you really learn to love and enjoy new things. So thanks for tuning in. We didn't talk it too much about vernal pools, um, but if you have any questions, maybe you can comment them on the video and I'll head online later and I'll, I'll throw in some answers. Um, either way, have a good one. Stay safe from Farrington NatureLink. Thank you. See you later. Bye.